Hello and welcome to MCN and welcome to the middle of Sicily and a dried up riverbed. Now you may be wondering why I'm stood here, but I have to say this place is like an off-road heaven. There are hundreds of miles of trails and it is the perfect place to go off-roading. And that is exactly why we're here with these. This is five of the most hardcore middleweight adventure bikes that you could buy today. We've got Ducati's Desert X, we've got the KTM 890 Adventure R, We've got Husqvarna's new Norden 901 Expedition. We've then got Triumph's Tiger 900 Rally Pro. And to top it all off, we've got Yamaha's Tenere 700 World Raid. Now, to keep things fair, we've put them all on a control tire. So they're all on Metzler Crew 4s, which are a bit more capable off-road. We've also enlisted the help of four of Pirelli's test riders. So they're motocross riders, enduro riders, to really get the best sense of how they feel when they're ridden hard too. And to top it all off, we've even done a day on the road. So what is the best middleweight adventure bike you can buy today? Let's find out. This MCM video has been produced in partnership with Bikeshore Insurance. So we have had two incredible days of riding in Sicily. We spent a full day on road, we spent a full day off road. And between myself, between Michael Neves, MCN's chief road tester, and between the four Pirelli test riders, we have got our final results. So coming in, in fifth place, Drum roll please. Ooh. Yamaha's Tenere World Raid. Now, you might be wondering why this bike is in the test. Well, this test is for the most hardcore middleweight adventure bikes that we can get. And this is Yamaha's most hardcore adventure bike. Now, it's not too dissimilar to the standard Tenere. It makes the same power, it's got the same chassis. It comes with a few little different bits and bobs. So it comes with different OE tires, but the main part is it's got this big, double fuel tank you can see that heifer there and it also comes with upgraded suspension as well so they're really the two main topics for this bike it was sort of always going to be out of its depth in this on the road the brakes are quite weak still quite heavy it feels very underpowered and it just doesn't have that extra oomph and ability that the rest of this class packs in abundance off-road it was the bike that everyone wanted to go on the least. I have to admit, we did some tests on the standard Tenere and as a slightly less experienced off-road rider, I much preferred the standard Tenere. It's much thinner. You can see how hefty these tanks are. And not only do they sort of restrict you, even with little legs, but it really adds a lot of weight. It sort of cancels out the uprated suspension in a way because it has that extra bit of heft about it. Now, the off-road guys were still doing some amazing stuff on this, but even for them, this was last by quite a distance and this was sort of the one that everyone avoided but it is the cheapest on test by a mile it is the lowest capacity bike on test by a mile and in all fairness it held its own it did a great job but in this company it didn't have the legs to keep up talking of legs we're getting on to number four now this was a bit of a surprise for me it is Husqvarna's Norden 901 Expedition now you may think this looks similar to another bike on test, and you'd probably be right in thinking that. This is essentially a KTM 890 Adventure in a slightly different, and I've got to say quite a bit sexier cloak. Now, this is the Expedition model, which is new for 2023. It only has a few little tweaks to it, but there's, there's sort of more to take it further rather than take it somewhere off-road more aggressively. So this model, although we've taken them off, it comes with some nice little soft panniers, you get heated seat, heated grips. You get some really nice bits on this bike, and especially when you've got stuff like the bigger screen for doing extra mileage, it sort of makes sense. Now, in isolation, this bike is pretty impressive. I mean, just look at it, it's an absolute stunner. The graphics look amazing. It's got that really awesome retro look. It, to be honest, it's my favorite looking bike on the test. On the road, we all really enjoyed it when we jumped on it first, but when you jump on the KTM, it sort of makes this feel inferior in every single way. It doesn't have that agility that the KTM does, and it sort of lived in its shade the whole time. Off-road, I really enjoyed this. As a slower, less experienced off-road rider, it sort of complemented me nicely. It's, it feels really soft and really squidgy and really easy. The weight feels nice and low, and the engine is just amazing. It gives you all of the power and all of the feel, but it doesn't actually feel really aggressive. So as much as I was enjoying riding it and it was giving me confidence, the other hardcore off-road riders, they all seem to enjoy it as well. It was a really good bike, but its problem comes in orange. And that's, to be honest, why it finished so low down. In isolation, it's a great bike, but when you've got its sister or its cousin bike that's just 
that bit better, it makes this feel worse. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad bike. You get a lot of machine for your money, but all in all, it just didn't have the minerals to cut it overall. Now, we're changing things up a bit here because this is Triumph's Tiger 900 Rally Pro in third place. Now, this is a bit of oddity among all these bikes. It's the only triple in the lineup. Now, you may think it looks a bit like Triumph's Big Tiger, the 1200, and it does. It's sort of got that big road adventure bike stance about it. Now, there's loads of Tiger 900s in the lineup. Triumph seem to have thousands of the things if you go on their website, but they say this is the most off-road capable of them all. So this is the Rally Pro. This is the fully kitted up, most expensive middleweight adventure machine that they offer. On the road, this thing was absolutely incredible. That engine is lovely, it's exciting, but it's smooth, offers loads of power, offers loads of torque. The chassis is really nice. The riding position is comfortable, but even on road, you could feel that it was sort of built as a road bike. There are a few little niggles that we had with this. So for example, these crash bars really stick out. And when you're changing gear on this side, if you've got big adventure boots, like I'm wearing Alpine Stars Tech 10s, they sort of catch as you're going to change gear and the gear lever just doesn't seem in the right position. So little things like that were already raising some red flags for us before we took it off road. Now, don't get me wrong, this was an amazing road bike. It did everything well, it brakes well, handles well, accelerates well, it's got a lovely dash, but off road is sort of where it was let down. And that's not just me talking, that was from the pros as well, who were really hammering this thing. Now, I actually found this bike the most difficult to get confidence in. I don't know if it's because of the triple motor, I don't know if it's because it's got that slightly more road bias feel to it, but as soon as you start to stand up on it, it just doesn't feel like it was made to go off road. It, may, it feels like it was made to be a road bike and they've sort of just added a bit of off road spice to finish it off. You sort of sit over and onto it and it doesn't give the same feedback through the front wheel that pretty much every other bike on this test gave. Now that triple motor is amazing on the road, but it offers a shed load of power. And the way that it delivers its power is smooth, but it's so aggressive off-road. I had to play around in the dash with loads of different modes and I just couldn't get it dialed in because when you're on really loose stuff like the gravel, it fires itself and it just keeps on spinning, which is the most difficult thing to deal with. I'd say if you were buying this and you were doing sort of 80% to road to 20% off-road, this is where it's at. But if you want a bike that can do both, on-road and off-road and do them both incredibly well then come on with me to number two now i wasn't sure what was going to be in second and what was going to be in first but bringing it up in second place the runner-up is ktm's 890 adventure r now this is their most hardcore off-roading middleweight that they do there's a more robust version with slightly lower travel suspension and they also do a slightly lower spec, which in 790 and you know, the bigger in the 1290s as well. So this is sort of middle of the road, but it sort of sits perfectly for me because where the 1290s are quite big and the 390s just don't have that much power to keep you excited, this is like the perfect combination. Now, on road, this thing is exciting. As you can see, it almost looks like a KTM Enduro bike with the front mug guard, with its aggressive bars it sort of takes a lot of that DNA and you can feel that on the road. That motor is incredibly punchy. It's so exciting. From sort of two and a half, three thousand 3000 RPM, it just fires you forward and you can have some real fun with it no matter what gear you're in. It's got some nice electronics on it. It's got some nice riding modes and that WP suspension works so well. It's kind of strange that this is in essence almost the same bike as the Husqvarna because you jump from one to the other and they feel like a completely different machine. It's absolutely wild how much difference just a few little tweaks can make. And looking at a spec sheet, you would never think that. It's only when you ride them back to back, you feel just how much more poised and aggressive this KTM is. But because it is poised and aggressive on the road, it's just not the most comfortable thing in the world. It really isn't. Like you can see here, Unless you've got my legs, you're, you're pretty much doomed if you want to be doing long journeys. The wind protection isn't great. And as well, to top it off, the brakes on this are pretty poor. They work all right if they're on your own, but when you're in this company, they really do let it down, especially the back brake. It just feels like it has no power whatsoever. But on the flip side, that kind of helps it out in every single way off-road. 
This was the bike today that, with my skill set, I enjoyed the most by a long shot. It was the easiest to ride. They've done some really clever stuff. So the fuel tank and the fuel actually sits lower than what it would conventionally with every other machine we've got on test here. It means that the weight actually feels really low. It feels almost like a big enduro bike. And because the bars are so high and the pegs are so high, when you're standing up, it feels completely natural. The engine, although it's got that really nice punch to it, it feels like it's almost just mapped for off-roading. KTM do incredible in the off-road scene with their motocross and enduro bikes. And I know that press packs always talk about all this development and stuff, but this feels like a really refined off-road bike. To be honest, it was amazing because even though I enjoyed it and I felt the most confident and the most connected to the floor and the most feel with this bike, all of the Pirelli guys absolutely loved this bike as well. This and first place were the bikes they were fighting over and this actually finished first for off-roading only. The only thing that let it down was it just didn't have that poise on road to make it the perfect all rounder. Because that is where we go to number one and the winner of the middleweight adventure test. Enter, please, Ducati's Desert X. Now, for a bike that is essentially a Multistrada V2 in a pair of motocross boots, it far exceeded my expectations, and I think it far exceeded everyone's expectations here. Although it's Ducati's first real proper modern stab at an off-road bias machine, it is incredible. Now, let's start with the road manners because they're important. And this bike was amazing on the road. It's comfortable, it's got incredible technology, the brakes, it wears them Brembo's. It has by far the best brakes out of all of these bikes. It has better brakes than all of these bikes combined, to be honest. It has a really easy to use dash with a whole host of rider modes. And you can actually use the rider modes really nicely as well. If you put it in urban mode, it takes it down to about 75 horsepower and it makes it so gentle and smooth around town. But in sport mode, it's exciting and it's sporty and somehow still it just offers an exciting and fun ride. It's comfortable for both myself at five foot seven and some of our six foot plus testers, which is no mean feat whatsoever. And although it's not perfect, like you get buffeting from the screen and it doesn't have the best sound, it's still the best road bike here. And even though it's the best road bike, this Ducati managed to translate itself incredibly well off-road too. Now, being a smaller rider, you sort of look at this and that is a big old thing. It can be a bit nerving. You know, you've got your fuel tank up here, but from the moment I jumped on it, it felt so well balanced and so composed. Even at slow speeds, when you're moving around and getting it about, it feels so much more balanced than it should, especially if you're just looking at its weight. Now, when we handed it to the guys who can really push the limits, they were absolutely blown away with how well it performs. With a set of these Karoo fours on it, they were just firing it here, there and everywhere. They had a little play with the traction control and the gravel modes and stuff like that. I preferred it in slightly less power mode because it just softened off the power a little bit. And they were just had everything off and were just going wild with it. To be honest, I wasn't expecting this bike to win, but when you look at it now, it just fits perfectly. It has incredible on-road manner. It has incredible performance off-road and it does it all while looking like an absolute superstar. Ladies and gentlemen, our 2023 hardcore middleweight adventure bike winner, Ducati's Desert X. Now, thank you for watching. Hope you really enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe for more of this stuff coming up. This MCM video has been produced in partnership with Bikeshore Insurance.